Star School right off the border of the Navajo Nation. Uh, we're bringing and have brought PPEs to the school, donation from World Vision. So from World Vision to the Navajo Nation, right out to our schools, in this case, charter schools, private schools. And so just showing a little support, showing a little love. Again, we brought face mask, uh, cleaning supplies, uh, hand sanitizer, and a little bit of school supplies out to Star School. Uh, we look forward to learning more about Star School. We appreciate you here meeting with leadership here, and uh, they were uh, blessed. And so we just want to continue to continue to advocate for you all to mask up, stay safe, uh, maintain social distancing, and uh, as the numbers come down, we look to have consecutive days of zero cases, uh, positives, and also zero deaths. So I uh, appreciate all your help. So as we always do on this uh, day of, uh, of uh, our town hall update, uh, I'll open up a prayer, give a short update, and then introduce Jonathan Nez, who's also out in the field today. So appreciate his leadership as well. So I uh, can't, yeah, Chidi and God, we thank you, Lord, for another day of life. We open up this town hall meeting, Lord, Father. We ask that you grant us your wisdom, Father, we thank you for the moisture. The animals will be blessed and the, the spring planting season, Lord, will be bountiful as we uh, harvest in the fall. So we're thankful for that, Lord. We give you this time uh, that we can meet, be with the leaders, Lord, as they're out and about, protect them in their coming and in their going. Also, Lord, be with us. And as we um, receive new data, new updates, Lord, from our health professionals for this uh, during this virus, Lord, that we use the information and, and govern wisely. We lead wisely, Lord. So be with leaders, Father, President Jonathan Nez and our team, Lord, and our 24th Navajo Nation Council delegates. And Lord, be with the leadership here at the Star School, Lord, doing a great thing, blessing and being there for 106 of our little children, Father, from uh, kindergarten, from preschool on up to eighth grade, Lord. Bless them and uh, continue to establish their work, Lord, and expand their, their work, Lord, as they expand minds and give knowledge. So we thank you again for all those that we uh, consider today, Lord. Be with the whole Navajo Nation, Father God. All of our people, Lord. Heal the land, Father. Heal the, 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 the people that are struggling right now, that are enduring hardship. And let us look to you for all things. So we th say these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we, uh, uh, again, are out in the field today. I uh, appreciate our EPS, uh, uh, Leo, Marwin, and Aralia helping us deliver all of these uh, great uh, cleaning items, everything you'll need to fight a pandemic, right? We have uh, hand sanitizer, we have cleaning supplies that will kill a virus up to 99%, face shields, and uh, we also have uh, some school supplies here. So it's a great thing coming to this school, Star School out uh, here. I had not heard about it, to be honest, but every, the more I learn, the more I want to learn, and the more I want to uh, see what uh, we could do to continue to support them as they uh, teach our young children. And so we appreciate it. So thanks again. I, I made them leave it here for 10 minutes just so we could do a little segment here. But um, the latest numbers here, real quick. One dose of the vaccine and uh, more than 1.1 million people are fully vaccinated. So we're going to help stamp out COVID-19 here in this time with all of your help. So I appreciate that. Uh, more vaccines are being uh, made available to the age of 16 and uh, older in Arizona. And uh, the total positive cases, 8, 837,849 since last March. So one year, uh, those many cases with uh, 605 new cases. Uh, doing a deeper dive here into the Apache County 10,774 positive cases this whole year with two new cases. So that's looking good. Hoping for zeros. Uh, Navajo County, 15,613 cases with nine new cases to report. Uh, Coconino County, rounding out our Tri-County area that touches on the Navajo Nation within northeastern Arizona and northern Arizona. Total positive cases, 16,972 with nine new cases. Uh, New Mexico. Uh, yesterday, uh, New Mexico updated statewide COVID-19 map shows that there are no counties in the red level. So praise the Lord. San Juan and uh, Gallup, New Mexico counties have reached the highest level, turquoise, before the, the green, which means that COVID pandemic is no longer, right? So we're at the next highest level, uh, turquoise. So continue prayers for us stamping out COVID-19. So we appreciate all of you, our Navajo citizens, for being diligent and for continuing to be safe when you uh, get out there and travel, social distancing, washing and sanitizing our hands. So you are all part 
of why these numbers are so low. I can't. We appreciate you. Total positive cases in New Mexico, 190,275 uh, this whole year with 218 new cases. San Juan County there, 13,661 this whole year with six new additional cases. And lastly, rounding out the counties within uh, northwestern New Mexico that touch the Navajo Nation, Gallup McKinley County there, 12,117 with three new cases to report. So we appreciate again you all being safe, continue to be safe there as we uh, uh, see the numbers uh, decline. Utah, rounding out our three states that comprise the Navajo Nation. Yesterday, Governor Spencer Cox signed a legislation bill into law nicknamed COVID-19 Endgame that lifts the statewide mask mandate as effective of April 10th. So one day, one day soon, very soon, we're going to be also able to do that, right? But we still need our mask here on the, the, the Navajo Nation. So uh, total positive cases, 382,733 with 562 new cases. San Juan County and wrapping up the southeastern uh, portion of Utah, total positive cases stands at 1,847. And the Utah Navajo Health System is reporting total positive cases this whole year at 1,083. So there you have it, the latest updates as of this fine day here. Uh, we are on, uh, what day is this here? March <laughs> uh, 25th. Been a whole year and a few days here, Shadina. We continue to pray for you as a nation. Your leaders continue to work hard. The new ARPA has uh, been uh, signed and uh, we're looking at uh, receiving a whole lot of money. And so uh, President Nez, myself, a 24th Navajo Nation Council will meet real soon to see what that looks like as we stamp out this virus here on the Navajo Nation. So we appreciate this and uh, again, uh, continued prayers for you. Um, I am out at Star School here, just past Loop, Arizona, where 106 Navajo students, almost, thereabouts, we have a couple of uh, non navos but what a blessing it is to just be able to receive World Vision donations to the Navajo Nation, out to the schools where the school and the staff are going to use it and be blessed by it. So, Mr. President, we appreciate your leadership out there in the field as well. And uh, at this time, I'm going to give it to you from day school. Oh, I'm sorry, Star School, Arizona. We'll call that that, right? So, hot going at. We love you and appreciate you all. I continue prayers for you.
our grader, our backhoe, and our skidster. We do have another two more equipment, so actually one more water truck and a chapter truck that's going to be forthcoming. So, let's go. Kuto, Bakken, Sandigi, and Diego, Bakken. But the, what we have, this is not the this is not the stopping point. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We would like to sit down with all the road people, uh, road entities, Apache County, BIA, INTA, to work with us to facilitate or co uh, collaborate to where we can be able to ensure that all our road systems are maintained and and uh, for our constituents to use. That is what we're looking at. And um, to my honorable president, Mr. Nez, I'm going to ask you to think about sitting and having in the sit down with us. Because we're a certified government uh, chapter, and we would like to get into, go into agreement. We've been trying to work ourselves with uh, with some of the departments under the division to go into an agreement to where we can uh, take over some of the functions that the division are undertaking. And that's where we run into problems. And that's where our council delegate, uh, uh, that's where she comes in too. She needs to, we need to work together to where any obstacle that we encounter Legislation wise, we need to overcome them and see how we can take a look at those legislation to enable us to do some of the things that we would like to do as a certified chapter. And then, lastly, I would like to thank the 24th Navajo Nation Council for facilitating to facilitating for us to use the Shehassan Fund to be able to purchase these equipment. And then, I also like to Thank the department, CPMP, Mr. Johnson, Alma Johnson, part of the And then also, I know these purchases would not have happened if it weren't for the staff at CPMD. When I say staff, I'm talking about your account and those those people that push the paperwork. I like to specifically thank Margaret McGay, one of your employees. I know she she really pushed this paperwork for us to get these equipment. So thank you, tell her I said thank you, and I really do appreciate her work. And then for to the uh, Four Rivers uh, representative, thank you for working with us to make sure that we got what we needed and all the attachments. Thank you for working with us. Ado, with all uh, OMB, OOC, all the Navajo Nation uh, division, um, division, and then the last, lastly, I'd like to thank my staff, my chapter manager, my administrative assistant, Lorinda, um, Kevin, and Gary, where are you at? Wait back there. These four are administrative people, uh, staff, and they put in a lot of time and hours to make sure that we meet all the deadlines. Make sure what they make sure that what we need was put on paper and forward to Three Rivers, and then from there facilitate the uh, Mr. Uh, make the job easier for Elmer and company. So, hey, yada, I can't get it. So, hey, yada, I can't find my any of these for something. James, President Benali, and thank you. I know it's a little chilly. But uh, as I was sitting here looking at uh, 
the view, the beautiful view that you all wake up to every day. It's very, very scenic here. And you all are blessed to have the mountains and also the sand rock uh, sculpted uh, bridges in your community. So, あの、Vice President Lizer, you can get a call. What I be has any silly? Aro, ah, adin na daya. Kung chudit sa, any get a call ya. Kaya na chudit zimbe last day ni ka. I I just wanted to let everybody know that we are on uh, Facebook Live right now. The reason why we're on live is, you know, we're trying to juggle a lot of events. I know the viewers are wondering what's going on in Cove, Arizona. We do updates Tuesdays and Thursdays regarding COVID-19. So today, Thursday, this event and our update, same time. But you know what? We can make it work, right? Because the Navajo people uh, are to be commended and the local chapters also to be commended for doing their hard work, getting the information together, packaged up given to their delegates, and that is the reason why over $24 million from the CSN fund was utilized to buy equipment for communities. You got a greater park here, you got a backhoe behind us, and a, a little a bobcat there, and other equipment that are going to be purchased uh, for the communities for their needs during this time. But uh, Eli, if you got the slide go to the first slide just want to get a quick update i'm sure the, the folks here would like that update as well overall 252,226 of our navajo people have caught covid 19 since the start last week we uh remembered those that we've lost right and to this day 1235 of our Navajo people have gone back to the Lord, have gone back to the Creator, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the families who lost loved ones 
but we also need to remember. And we also should remind ourselves of the resilience of our people. And I want to commend each and every one of you throughout the Navajo Nation here in Cove, Arizona, for the hard work, the chapter official, the administration. We've been here many times. Delegate Prati has been here uh, handing out food and supplies with the chapter staff, the chapter leadership here so that we can keep our Navajo people home. And because of your hard work, Navajo people, the folks here in the Cove community managed to bring those numbers down. The second slide there shows the progression uh, since day one of the virus here. We went through two waves here on the Navajo Nation, right? One of the biggest wave we had was during the holiday season. But you know what? This country has gone through three waves. And so the Creator has blessed us and made sure that we are able to work together to get through these difficult times. And we thank God, our Creator, for assisting us and getting through this pandemic. But it's not over yet, right? We're all wearing masks, even though many of us have probably had shots, maybe two shots already. Even though CDC right now is telling us you don't have to wear a mask if you're uh, vaccinated, right? I said, no way. We're gonna we're gonna stay with the old CDC guidelines. We're gonna wear masks all the time. Remember, they even said you don't have to be six feet. Now it's three feet. I said, no, we're gonna do two sheep lengths, right? Kishi the Benz on to Maybe you guys are getting hungry now. I better stop saying the sheep. Number uh, three, I know Navajo people, the third slide there says they wanted to know what was the progression. So we from January 1st to uh, today, we show you a daily count of cases, and it's pretty high. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, you all know on Monday. You know, last week we had a day of prayer of unity, remember on Friday, where Deb Holland spoke to us. I read a, a letter from the President of the United States and the First Lady of the United States. Prayers do work, ladies and gentlemen, because on Monday, what happened? Zero cases and zero deaths. And that is because of each and every one of you following through those, following those protocols that we put in place. I know some people get tired of it. So we don't want to stay home. We don't want to wear masks. But here on the Navajo Nation, guess what? We think about the greater good. It's not about ourselves, right? It's about our families. It's about our communities. And it's about our nation. And it's because of that, you Navajo people have managed to bring the virus down to where it is today. And the fourth slide just gives you an update, a comparison with the United States and the Navajo Nation in terms of the vaccination summons. 238,085 doses have come to the Navajo Nation. And one of, and some of those have gone into your arms here in Cove, Arizona. 196,902 have been given. That is 82.7% that has been administered here on the Navajo Nation. Compare that to other states huh, throughout the country. They're still at 30%, 20%, and here on the Navajo Nation, we have been uh, giving out a lot of doses. 80,755 of, of us have been fully vaccinated. How many of you, if you want to share, you can raise your hand. If not, you don't have to. How many of you have gotten two shots so far? All right, including myself. Congratulations. Give, your, give yourselves a round of applause. And you know what? And then later on, they give us the Johnson & Johnson where it's only one shot. Huh? So uh, we should have waited for it. No, just kidding. But uh, appreciate everybody. And we're on the soft reopening. We're going to be reevaluating the orange, maybe going to yellow sometime soon, where 50% uh, of the occupancy will be in our businesses. So we're working with the council on uh, uh, re-establishing or re-evaluating some of these resolutions here on the Navajo Nation, including school reopenings. The only thing about school reopenings, as you all know, is that our kids aren't vaccinated, huh? That's the difference. 
And so that's why there's a concern and we're, we're holding schools accountable for these reopening measures so that these uh, spreads don't happen in the school. So I just wanted to give you all that update real quick. Thank you for your patience. And now I, I wanna go into talking about uh, what we're here today for in Cove, Arizona is to celebrate uh, today's um, heavy equipment being delivered. We were in Rock Point earlier, and you all are the second community to get their heavy equipment uh, in this short amount of time. So congratulations. And I thought James was going to, when he was talking to me, I thought James was going to tell me, jump in one of these. I just wanted to say thank you for being on the call. And I just wanted to let everyone know that we are still in an orange phase and ready to move to a yellow phase soon. So I just want to congratulate all the work that you have done as um, our Dene people here. Oh, yeah, and Kadimi, though, Jodi Hashim Zatan Kwati. The cousin Saginas, it's at the Holyoni Quati, Ya Dagoy's Kitote Nielsen. Then in that it's in Quati and here Quati is cutting date to her door at the Holyon Sipina Quati and Quinza Holzies. Um, did the same day cut off to her desk to say Dr. Jill Jimmy Siado. I'm at the executive director for Navajo Department of Health and also working. Um, in response to the Health Command Operations Center here under the department working with Indian Health Service, the 638 associations and all the other departments. So with that, um, we are often continuing to operate and continue to work with all the different sectors with uh, the Navajo Nation to ensure that they follow the public health emergency orders. I know that everyone wants to come back to normal, but there is no new there's no old normal, there's a new normal that we will continue to face because uh, we don't know when this pandemic's gonna end. So we encourage everyone to continue to wear your mask, make sure you follow CDC guidelines. Also, that includes physical distancing, um, six feet or more as well. And also um, wearing the new recommended mask of wearing a tight fitted mask or double masking or some other sort of um, mask that is um, can have both a disposable mask and a cloth mask. Also, continue to wash your hands and clean and disinfect high touch surface areas as well. Um, another area that we want to continue to have everyone um, do is to um, understand that you still need to get tested if you're showing symptoms. You might not know if it's COVID or it could be a cold or allergies, but uh, we know we've been seeing less tests, COVID tests being conducted in the Navajo Nation, might be like that everywhere, but maybe there are less people that are sick out there. But if you are experiencing symptoms, please get tested. And it's very important because you're not sure if you're exposed to COVID or not. So you might not have symptoms, which they call asymptomatic, but just continue to um, take precautions by getting tested. Also, if you haven't been vaccinated, um, or if you know of someone that hasn't been vaccinated, um, help that person if they're interested in getting vaccinated. Um, it's still very important. There are different terms, uh, terminology out there that people are using now. Instead of using the word vaccine hesitancy, there's now terms like vaccine confidence. Um, some people might think that the vaccine might not help them or they don't um, or they think it's OK because others are vaccinated or they might not have access. So I think uh, they might not be hesitant. They just might have other uh, barriers to getting vaccinated. So a lot of that might be around just being aware of where to get a vaccine, how to get a vaccine and then having someone explain to you um, the benefits of getting a vaccine if you're not. Um, comfortable 
or not may not not have it, enough information to uh, make a decision for yourself to get vaccinated or for your elder mother, um, grandmother, or mother-in-law, any relative that you can think of that could be high risk. And right now, under the vaccine uh, prioritization, we're in phase two right now. And so that means we are um, have gone past the essential um, infrastructure, essential employees, um, all the frontline workers. So if those individuals, if you haven't been vaccinated, um, see if you can still do that. But otherwise, we're expanding our group to other individuals that weren't in those other phases. So the benefits of vaccine is basically to protect yourself, others, and also from getting really sick if you do get COVID. You eventually you could still get COVID with the vaccine, but you may not experience um, high illness or severe illness. The vaccines are effective against um, hospitalizations as well. So just know that um, it is um, effective in that matter. Also, it helps um, you pr um, protect other people around you, especially those that are older and high risk, as I mentioned. And also, um, you can't get COVID from the vaccine. Um, the vaccine does not have the virus that causes COVID-19. And sometimes getting COVID-19 vaccine can cause symptoms. So you will experience symptoms um, such as um, body aches or headaches, things like that. But they'll eventually go away in um, a day or two. And this is quite normal because your body is building up to immunity. So you'll be fine. Some reasons to get vaccinated, like I mentioned, is to protect others, build your own immunity, and help stop the virus. So getting vaccinated will help any additional mutations of the virus um, so that you can um, protect our community from any new um, progression of other variants that are that could be a threat to us. So getting vaccinated when it is available to you, so it's available almost to everybody now, but continue to wear your mask and other precautions. As I mentioned about the cloth mask over a medical procedure mask or a medical procedure with knot, knotted ear loops and, and sides are good examples. Also continue to avoid large gatherings. Um, Public Health Emergency Order 6 does say state gathering of 10 persons or less. These are for examples in public or indoor outdoor settings. Make sure if you're indoor that it's well ventilated. Also that you are at your workplace, protect yourself, especially um, if you know that you're experiencing sickness, please stay home. Anyone that's sick shouldn't go to work, uh, do errands or anything. Make sure you don't have any symptoms when you go about to get tested. Make sure you don't have COVID. Also for businesses, it's also important that if you do experience an exposure of a case, report it to the Department of Health webpage to make sure that the business follows any kind of regulations regarding food or institutional regulations regarding safety. So that's why it's important that those cases are also um, help trigger our collaboration with the different regulatory entities on the Navajo Nation and also with contact tracing as well. So those are ways that um, this portal is helpful and it also makes sure that um, there are proper recommendations on isolation and quarantine that are given to the company, the business, or either a school or a tribal health program um, are all um, recommended. And now in the public health order, one of them does state that they have to report to the um, portal if there's any exposure. In regards to the pandemic going on this long, um, as we are seeing good numbers, um, there were some continued ways to relieve stress is taking care of yourself by exercising, eating healthy, getting enough sleep, avoiding alcohol use and drugs. Also um, consider other ways to communicate with family and that's very important to stay connected for your own mental well-being. And the safest place is at home. And I did hear like on the, think on the comments on the last town hall, like there are, um, their restrictions are being lifted, but we also encourage individuals to take responsibility in making those decisions to stay home. So staying home is the safest place because you're, you have less risk and exposure if you're at home and you're, you take all the precaution, you have less visitors and whatnot. And so the safest place is always at home. Um, 
to reduce transmission. The pandemic is not over, it's still here. So continue to say, um, practice all of those uh, precautions. So as we move forward and continue to um, lift restrictions, we do ensure that it is now up to our own people to decide on how to take on those responsibility of moving it around and about for necessary travel and whatnot. So I just want to thank everyone again. And now I'm going to introduce Captain Johnson with um, the Navajo Area IHS office. So um, take it away, Captain Johnson. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's uh, good to be on the Facebook Live session again. And just seems like Tuesday was here just a couple of hours ago, and here we are on Thursday morning. So, again, this is uh, Captain Brian Johnson. I uh, serve as the uh, Acting Deputy Area Director at Navajo Area Indian Health Service. Um, I work beside uh, Ms. Rosalind So as the uh, Area Director, along with uh, Dr. Christensen, our Chief Medical Officer, and, of course, our other um, executive leadership team uh, at Navajo Area uh, office in St. Michael's, Arizona. Um, just wanted to to make a few comments today, and uh, I specifically just wanted to mention uh, again. Here we are on March 25th. Uh, it's been a <clears throat> certainly a long pandemic, as we all know, and um, right now the signs are 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 looking very uh, positive. But we know that we need to remain uh, cautiously optimistic meaning we really need to make sure that we're still uh, taking measures to protect ourselves um, in in the event that uh, we see additional cases. There's, there's still um, opportunity for cases to um, continue, and uh, we want to make sure that, that we are sharing information, that we're being transparent with the public about the status of things um, in terms of COVID-19, um, the number of cases we're seeing and, and any other changes that might, might be happening, uh, just so um, we're all on the same page moving forward and doing what we can to protect our friends and family. Um, you know, we've talked on many occasions, and we've had uh, our uh, Dr. Va uh, from our Chinle Service Unit and some others, uh, Dr. Laura Hammett and others who have done um, provided what they refer to as um, gating measure uh, presentations here on this uh, Facebook Live, as well as other um, phone calls and other venues. And um, it's when we talk about gating measures, we're really talking about the things that public health officials are, are tracking to make sure that we understand how things are going in our communities locally, specifically here on the Navajo Nation we're, we are very interested in, in directly on the Navajo Nation, as well as uh, being interested in knowing what's going on in border towns, as well as border states, uh, because of this disease agent can move uh, fairly rapidly once an outbreak uh, begins to happen. And so um, we've been, of course, continuing to, as, as Dr. Jim uh, mentioned, we continue to monitor the number of cases that are happening we look at the infection rate um, between individuals uh, here on the Navajo uh, Nation, as well as uh, hospital bed capacities. We talk about intensive care. We talk about our inpatient beds uh, at all of our uh, hospital facilities on Navajo. And then, of course, we look at uh, vaccines and how we're doing with those percentages uh, the number that have been administered or at least initiated here on the nation. And so we do watch those numbers very closely. Um, as Dr. Jim indicated, as well as others, we are presently in an orange phase, which is um, definitely it was, a, it was a, an improvement in terms of phase. When we talk about the color code of phases, we were previously at red and now we're at um, orange. And we are meeting the criteria for yellow, but before we go to yellow, we're, we're making sure that we're, uh, again, looking at all of our numbers, all of our metrics that we're following to make sure that uh, we're safe when we say, you know, once, once we do enter into the uh, yellow uh, phase officially, and hopefully that will be, that will happen. 
Um, overall, we've seen a, a 14-day downward trend in terms of the number of new cases. So that's um, very, very positive. And um, we've also seen in terms of infection rate uh, that, that that has gone down as well, that that's decreased, which is a very positive uh, sign. Uh, in terms of new cases, you'll oftentimes hear the public health officials, whether they're um, doctors or epidemiologists or others, they'll refer to the incidence of uh, COVID-19 on the Navajo Nation. And when you hear the word incidence, what that refers to is the number of new cases that we're seeing. And so um, we know that some of the later, some of the more recent uh, measures in terms of new cases that um, between March 12th to March 18th, we've seen this, uh, again, a, a downward traje trajectory in terms of the number of cases. And we, um, over that seven-day time frame, we saw an average of 49 cases, again, which is a good sign. But, but I think we all need to understand that that means there are cases still occurring. There's still new cases occurring on the Navajo Nation um, but we do see that the numbers uh, of those are continuing to trend downward, and that's a very positive thing. But if we don't keep up our guard, if we don't do the things that we need to be doing that we know now that we need to do, uh, for example, wearing a mask, um, as has been stated multiple times in, in this particular uh, Facebook session, uh, when we talk about uh, keeping our distance, and washing our hands, it's so critically important at this time, okay? So, um, again, everything, it's, it's looking positive, and we need to remain positive, but we also need to be doing the things that are responsible so that we're protecting our, uh, our family members, we're protecting, you know, our friends, our colleagues, uh, because if, um, more, if, if one of us uh, contracts uh, COVID-19, as we know, it can spread and, and transmit to another person rather quickly. So we just need to make, make sure we're doing, again, what we can do. Um, one of the things that, that we've seen for sure is the number uh, of COVID-19 tests that uh, have been done over a period of time. That, that has been uh, tr trending downward as well. So we're in the number of uh, COVID-19 tests at all of our uh, healthcare facilities, um, we're seeing a decrease in the number of tests. And that makes sense to some, to some degree, because since we're seeing uh, less number of cases, we would uh, probably anticipate that there may be less testing done. But I think Dr. Jim hit on a very, very important note, which was that if you, if you have symptoms or if you even question for one reason or another that you may uh, have COVID-19, we do highly encourage uh, folks to um, go get tested. Um, it's, it's, we are still doing tested. We will, con or I'm sorry, we are still doing testing and we will continue to do testing uh, until further notice. We're, we're not gonna stop testing and um, that service is still available at your respective uh, health facility that you uh, typically receive care at. And so, it, again, if you ever have questions about whether or not you might have been exposed and you might be uh, showing some symptoms or you have some concerns and you feel like you need to be tested, please do. We are asking you to continue to do that. I say that because it's very important from a public health standpoint that we understand exactly uh, where we're at in terms of the number of cases here on the Navajo Nation. If, uh, if, if no one gets tested, then we will not be able to, to say with any degree of certainty where we stand with our positives or our positive cases here on the Navajo Nation. We still need to understand, are we getting individuals tested and are they testing negative or are they testing positive? And if we see a, an increase, maybe it's in a certain area of the Navajo Nation, maybe it's on the north side or maybe the south side, and we start seeing uh, an increasing number of cases, that helps us understand that we need to move quickly to address those cases and to provide uh, the assistance needed 
if it's isolation services or other, for those individuals in that area. We want to stop that spread immediately. It's, it's so important. And so that's why we have so many, we have contact tracers. Uh, these are individuals who reach out to the public when they, whenever you test positive. Um, and they, they, they find out who all you've been in contact with and they help identify um, and, and make sure that we communicate with those who may have been exposed they play such a critical role in a in this type of an outbreak. If it wasn't for the contact tracers, then we would never stop the spread. It would just be continual. So I want to give a, a big shout out to anyone and everyone uh, here on the nation that has served in that capacity over the last year. Uh, again, the contact tracers, whether you're working for a state program um, or you're working at the national level or here on Navajo Nation, critical, critical to stopping the spread here on the Navajo Nation. Um, just want to also um, make a quick mention that, uh, again, another positive sign that we're seeing is um, in the states that surround us, whether we're talking about Oklahoma, Texas, and Colorado, where there's still a risk of outbreak given their um, current status. And so those are being monitored uh, very closely then when we talk about New Mexico and Arizona as states, um, you know, the, they're showing slow disease growth uh, in terms of COVID-19, slow disease spread, which is very, very positive. But again, we have to uh, make sure we're doing the right things to keep it in that phase. Uh, one of the other things I'll mention, and it's, it's, it's been uh, talked about over time, but I think it's always worth uh, mentioning here because I know there's lots of concerns about it, and that is related to the various um, strains of, of, of COVID, the uh, mutations, and, you know, I, I know that there's been a lot of uh, concern and there continues to be, um, whether we're talking about the South, Africa strain, uh, South African strain or the California strain or the uh, United Kingdom strain, there's been lots of uh, interest in that area because that may help tell us where we're going to be going in the future. And I, I, I want to thank the uh, Navajo Nation. They've been uh, very helpful uh, with us in terms of the Indian Health Service uh, in setting up uh, monitoring where we uh, provide samples to uh, a, a vendor who is uh, specifically checking for some of these different strains. And that is, again, it's just similar to the uh, contact tracers I was mentioning earlier, very critical to uh, stopping the spread so that if we do um, see a new strain uh, starting to spread here, again, very important that we're able to address that quickly. Uh, time is of the essence in these types of situations so that um, we can uh, stop or halt the transmission here on the Navajo Nation. Um, I always like to take a moment and mention that, you know, the number of vaccinations that um, COVID-19 vaccinations that we've seen uh, here on the Navajo Nation with all of our tribal health organizations and our IHS uh, federal uh, facilities and all the good work that's gone into that. And I just want to say thank you across the Navajo Nation to whether you're a, whether you're a nurse, whether um, that, that's helped with COVID-19 vaccinations, whether you're a, a housekeeper that may be helped uh, with the drive through clinics and helped in terms of helping with uh, parking vehicles or directing traffic or providing safety uh, during these events. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of those who've been out in the elements over the, over the winter time. Um, it wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy. Uh, and and I was so, so proud of the work that's been done, uh, even when it's snowing, uh, raining, uh, and outside, uh, uh, I guess, standing beside vehicles, uh, helping people get their vaccinations. So a tremendous job. But we've, uh, you know, we've reached right at 197,000. We're, we're over that at this point uh, here on the Navajo Nation. So um, excellent job in terms of the numbers of vaccinations that's been provided. Um, I also just want to mention, as I did um, on Tuesday, the, the IHS at a national level has set a goal of uh, vaccinating one million people, one million Native Americans by the end 
of um, this month, by the end of March. And so we know that we're well on our way. Uh, we're we're over eight hundred and fifteen thousand uh, that that uh, we're aware of, and so uh, we're looking forward to reaching that one million uh, doses of vac- of uh, administered vaccine uh, shortly. Whenever we reach the end of this month, so um, we continue to be uh, in the top twenty percent. When we talk, when we look across the board nationally at states and other jurisdictions in terms of our numbers of vaccinations that we're doing, so we continue to perform well. Um, any vaccine that we receive, we are um, getting that out to the public as quick as we can. We continue to maintain a uh, vac- uh, COVID-19 vaccine schedule in the various communities and service areas, and that includes, again, all the federal and, and uh, tribally managed uh, facilities across the Navajo Nation, and we will continue to do that. So uh, again, thank you and your families for showing up and participating and uh, being kind uh, and as, as we had to wait patiently uh, to get all the traffic through some of these testing clinics, we appreciate uh, you for that and for uh, taking the time to make sure that your family's safe by uh, joining our uh, vaccine clinics. Um, I, again, I just want to remind everyone to, to stay vigilant. Please do not let down your guard. I know it would be easy right now to say, I'm, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask or I'm not going to worry about wearing a mask when I, when I, when I go certain places. And um, that is not advised. We, we continue to advise, please wear your mask. We're at a point where we fought and we fought and we have fought. And uh, we've all sacrificed. And we do not want to allow this um, bug to pop back up and begin spreading again, um, as we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to protect all our friends, neighbors, family, uh, and and colleagues. Um, So what I would also just like to say is, uh, as we come more to an end, uh, we continue to be thankful uh, for uh, U.S. Congress and uh, the White House and uh, Department of Health and Human Services who have been very um, helpful in terms of the funding to support many of the activities and efforts in the public health outreach that has been able to be accomplished. And uh, I won't go into the specific numbers, but it has been imperative in, in this particular outbreak that if we were not funded at a higher level, um, that could have posed many, many, many serious challenges. And so we're just thankful for um, the funding that we've been provided and, um, and, and hopefully we'll continue to move forward. You know, within, uh, I know within the Indian Health Service and within the tribally uh, managed health facilities, we're all looking at things uh, in terms of returning as much as we can back to normal operations to maybe all the different clinics and things that you might be used to at our facilities. And as you're aware, we had to close many of those during the epidemic to protect uh, anyone uh, entering facilities from an infection control uh, perspective. But we are working uh, towards uh, opening many of our clinics, and we're doing that in a carefully measured way and um, we'll continue to open up and share information with uh, all of our patients, getting information out through this venue as well as other maybe radio uh, uh, commercials or radio shows as well, just to make sure that folks have an idea of uh, what's going on at the various healthcare facilities across the Navajo Nation. So with that said, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and sign off here. And I know Dr. Fowler was on site with President Nez. She typically ends our uh, broadcast on Facebook Live, uh, but um, she's on site uh, out in the field. So uh, for today, uh, we'll go ahead and end here. And I just want to say uh, thank you to the uh, public, for the general audience for joining today, and we will continue to keep you uh, updated with the latest.